Hey gang, okay, so in the one helper reaction, uh, you know, video, <clears throat> kind of crammed a lot of stuff into there. So I wanted to take this video to kind of extract some of those helper reactions and as well include a few that I accidentally forgot to kind of put in there. Okay, so it's really just kind of two reactions per se, but you'll see. So I wanted to just rehash that we have a few options. For example, when you have some type of carbonyl in the benzylic position. So basically, I just kind of drew that just to show you that anytime you have a carbonyl straight off your benzene ring, right here, benzylic carbonyl, let's just say, for example, you wanted to wipe that carbonyl away. You wanted to reduce it. You have a few options. So in the previous video, I mentioned you can do catalytic hydrogenation as if we were going to, you know, you know, hydrogenate a double bond. However, it specifically hits carbonyls in the benzylic position, just in the benzylic position. You also <clears throat> had the option of doing the Clemenson reduction, which is a zinc mercury amalgam with some HCl. That also does the job. They are equivalent. What I forgot to mention is that you can use something that's called uh, rainy nickel and H2 as well. So all three of these do the same job. Just forgot to mention the rainy nickel. Okay. Rainy spelled R-A-N-E-Y. Okay. Just forgot to mention that one. And the other reaction I wanted to go over was uh, something I, you know, did not include in the last video. But let's say, for example, you had some type of alkyl group off of your benzene ring. If you throw in something called potassium permanganate, KMNO4, what you do is it doesn't matter how many of these you have. So I'll just complete this reaction and then I'll show you a couple examples. What this does is take alkyl change, it takes R groups, and it just transforms them into carboxylic acids like this, okay? Which is crazy, right? There's a mechanism. I've never encountered any teacher that's made someone learn that mechanism. And I'm gonna go ahead and raise this up top. But I just wanna show you some more examples of using this potassium permanganate uh, oxidation, right? Oxidation because we're taking something with zero oxygens and we're making it bonded to two. So let's just say we had this example. some KMNO4. Let's just assume you have excess. What this in fact does is you hit every alkyl group you have and make it a carboxylic acid. Okay? The one thing you need to watch out for is the only kind of condition you need to do this potassium permanganate uh, oxidation is if you just need a hydrogen, right? So at this position, we have three. At this position, we have one. If you were to try this potassium permanganate oxidation at this position, you're actually just gonna get a no reaction. You're just gonna be left with what you started. So the only condition for this oxidation to work is that you just need a hydrogen on your benzylic carbon. And if you don't, then nothing happens, okay? So, I want to show you one more example that might just be a little interesting with this potassium permanganate oxidation and it comes in the form of this. Let's just say we had a benzene ring, but we also kind of had another cyclohexane ring off of it. Let's say we had KMNO4. What you would in fact do is, right, we have two benzylic carbons. They both have available hydrogens on each of them. What you actually do is just business as usual, but you no longer have a ring. Okay, so remember the rainy nickel in H2 is in your arsenal for reducing benzylic carbonyls, and potassium permanganate is a really good thing to do oxidations with as long as you have a hydrogen on your carbon directly off the benzene ring.